What's up guys? Welcome back to our quick video. This is Alex, MTV Alex, and we're still here in the garage. We're still working on my wife's bike. And on the previous video, we did the stage one upgrades on this bike. On this stage, we're gonna do stage two. And uh, uh, this is kind of hard to do stage two because on stage two, what I like to do is actually go ahead and change the group set. But this bike is a little different. Let me tell you why. But before I tell you, if you haven't, you know the drill, subscribe, turn the notification bell on, uh, share this channel, leave comments down below. And if you want to support the channel, you know you can do it different ways through the affiliate links in the description below. Other than that, let's get right into it. So, group set, that means shifter, derailleur, maybe even cassette, and crank set. That's what I consider the group set, the whole thing, the whole nine yards. Now, why do I say this is a little bit different? It's because we actually have a free will, okay? So we have a free will, so that limits what we can do with this thing. Remember, this is a three by seven, so it's a 21 speed. And at the rear, we have a free wheel. That limits, that's why this stage is complicated depending on the bike that you get. In this bike, it'll be a little, a little bit different. So on stage two, for me, what I'm gonna end up doing only is convert this into a one by. And doing so is extremely easy. There's different scenarios, okay, for one by. So, some of the cheaper bikes, Walmart bikes, some of them, late, not lately, but to give you an example, the uh, Mongoose XR Pro had a uh, square taper crank set, and let me see. This is a square taper, so the where the cranks go is a square, and it's, the taper is actually the uh, stud on the bottom bracket, and it bolts on. Now, some, most of these budget bikes come with a three by like this, which is either riveted in or welded on. Now, on the Among Us XR Pro that I built a couple of years ago, this thing was completely separate. So you could, have, you could have taken it apart and I actually did. And that's what I currently have on my Among Us Black Am. So I removed all the chain rings right here, the three of them, and then bolted out a 104 BCD into the original square taper uh, crank arm and I was able to do a conversion like that now super easy if you have one that you can take these things off you can just go ahead and remove them with allen heads put in a new chain ring something like that what I have in there this is a 104 this is actually a square taper crank arm and you can buy them like that too if you don't want to change the bottom bracket however it's about the same price for a hollow tech bottom bracket, which is way lighter than this one. So I would strongly recommend going with the hollow tech instead of the square taper. So a chain ring like that bolts on, you can see right there, it has the four bolts. They're super, the chain rings, this is the chain ring. They're super inexpensive, about 10, $13, something like that. I was actually looking for another chain ring that I have. I just couldn't find it, but it's actually the same thing. So again, if you have one of these that you can take apart and many of the uh, chop bikes brands that have a three by might be the case like that, like the lower end uh, Marlins or the Trek Marlins and the Specialized like that, they, you might be able to get this uh, apart and just put in a new chain ring and you're done. You're, you're converted to a one by. In this case, however, I have one just like this and I'm gonna have to change the whole thing. So again, you have the two options. You can either buy the, the square taper crank arms that take a, a uh, chain ring, or you can buy something like this, different brands. This is a IXF, there's the JG bikes. It comes with the bottom bracket, and many times it even comes with the chain ring. Again, I was looking for the chain ring. I, can, I have it, I'll find it. Don't worry about it, it'll be in the video. But this is one way. So this is called a 104 BCD because the distance 
between this right here is 104 cent, uh, millimeters center to center you have this option or you have the other option like the one that I have on my two axioms that has a GXP is the same principle but the chain ring bolts on differently that one has it like that my other axiom has it like that and my main bike the polygon cis qt8 has a gxp chain ring and what that is is basically the same thing but it bolts on right here at the rear with three little screws so again i have a two different options that i'm gonna use i don't know which one i'm gonna use i'll make my mind but let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart the, the beauty about this is that the shifting will, will be much simpler you will have less things at the cockpit i'm gonna remove the shifter over there on the front i'm gonna re remove this front derailleur right here and it'll be much cleaner it'll look a whole lot better hopefully this thing is not cc in and it'll be a quick and easy job let's get right into it by the way i'm gonna link uh, affiliate links for all the tools that I'm gonna use and all the parts that I'm gonna use again You can also go to the link tree and you'll see the pictures of them in there as well So the first thing that I gotta do is remove the crank arm and I'll be using the crank arm puller and This basically goes right here You take the first you take the bolt that it has in there Sometimes it's a bolt or a nut and sometimes it's an allen bolt So you gotta take that out first and you have one on each side and this bolt is a 14 millimeter, although a 916 also works. And again, this is just righty tighty, lefty loose. Now, you also need to take this off, the front derailleur. However, the chain goes through it. So you can do, you can go about it two ways. You can either break the chain using, using a chain breaker tool, or you can just cut the derailleur but it will be useless in the future. In my case, I'm just gonna keep it on my used part drawer, drawer bin, just to have it as a spare. Although I don't see any brands, it's a low quality, whatever. I'm just gonna keep it, why not? Before you break the tool, check if you have a, miss a master link on it. If you do, you don't have to use this one. If you don't, then you have to break it. And then you can either put it back in there using the same tool, or you can get a master link, which I will show you in a little bit, and then connect it using the master link. That way you don't have to, it's a pain in the butt to put it back together with this one right here. Over here, you can see that the pin starts coming out and then you should be able to just break it loose. This one is rusted out, so it's gonna need a little more persuasion, but it is doable. I was gonna attempt to clean it, but it's giving me hell, so I'm just gonna break it. Then you can just unclamp the derailleur. And this is what I was telling you about the derailleur. The chain goes through here, so there's no way to take it out from here unless because this is kind of like riveted in this doesn't come out unless you and once i see it now that it's all rusted i mean this is not that bad the spring is not that bad so it can be cleaned out and then repaint uh but otherwise you can just cut it right here and then you don't have to go through removing the chain unless you might actually need to remove the chain because you might need to resize it if it's gonna end up too big because we have three in the front with a large cog in the front and now that's gonna be reduced so the chain it'll be too long so you actually I, yeah you needed to cut the tool the, the chain regardless so now that's off I can go ahead and remove this right here remove my front brake housing and we can go ahead and get rid of this cable housing we're not going to use it anymore for this you want to screw the back piece in you can even take this out that all the way if you want to and then matter of fact you should thread this all the way in as far as you can go hold this you're going to start tightening and this is going to pull it out hopefully 
Houston, we have a problem. This thing stripped out. My tool might actually be okay. Use more force. Shit. I don't even know where that went. And my, I just opened my garage. Oh my God. Lucky I didn't hit my car. This is out. So now the rest should be in theory. I even took off my hat. Pretty simple. Let's see if this thing had any grease in it. Doubt it, but we're gonna check. This thing is 100% dry. Still good though, but dry. So both of these loosen up towards the front. Both of these, both sides loosen up towards the front. Just remember that. Okay, I think I'm gonna go for the IXF. I can always change it back. I found the chain ring that I wanted to show you. This is actually a 104 BCD 34 tooth oval chain ring. This thing is gonna go right here. So, Used to make it better. I just got me quarter, three eighths, half inch drives, torque uh, wrenches. So I got my torque wrenches, but I forgot that I don't have the socket style for this. So I'm gonna use my embedded, my built-in torque meter. So you go, once it's tight, you go like this until you hear click and you hear click in a little bit wait click there you go and then you do the same thing for the other side usually put one spacer on the drive side if it needs more then i come back and add more click Now for oval chain rings, sometimes it's gonna have like a little arrow pointing where the crank arm goes. This one doesn't, but I know that the oval side, the longer side is gonna go opposite to the crank. So I'm just gonna put this. Ah, uh, should have put this before the pedal. Now usually if it's a 30 or less, I will put it inside. This is a 32 or more, so I'll put it on the outside. Now the IXF, this right here comes like bare metal right here, so it's kind of ugly. So I kind of spray painted that a while back. Just in case I needed to run a 32 chain ring or something like that. So now this is gonna go come with two bolts, one for the front, the one with the tread, and then one for the rear where the tread is going to go into right there now you might want to put some loctite in this if you want i don't have any so i'm just going to run it like that now at this point you just put the rear wheel back on i don't like this one that's too much play i gotta rebuild it but for the purpose of this video let's pretend that this is good to go I guess I can kind of call this stage two complete. And like I said at the beginning of the video, stage two, I usually change the whole drive train. Like I said, uh, crank set, bottom brackets, shifter and everything. However, in this one, 
have a free will. There's only so much we can do. So I guess you can, I mean, for the purpose of having a more modern bike, this is a great update and it actually looks way better than before with this over chain ring or just a single chain ring at the front. It looks way better, it's more modern and it's more up to date to current specifications of modern mountain bikes. So this is a great stage to change. Even though we still have a free wheel, again, remember this is a used bike, so I have issues with this. If it was the regular, I just found out that the hub might be missing some bearings inside. I'm not gonna get into that just yet. I have videos where I replace uh, the hub, the solid axle with quick release. So it's almost the same process. And if I do this to, for this one, I might just go ahead and convert that to a quick release because I do have bearings and I will just overhaul the whole thing. I'm not gonna get into detail on this video for this one because that's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this is that to show you that with very little, you can do a whole lot. Again, I leave a link in the description for this uh, IXF and the JG bike uh, crank sets, as well as the chain ring that I use and all the tools and materials and all that. And uh, on stage, I don't know if I'm gonna call it stage 2.5 maybe, because I wanna address the rest of the drivetrain. However, in order to do so, I'm gonna have to either get a new hub, cassette compatible, or a new wheel set, which I don't know, maybe, maybe I already have. So stay tuned for stage 2.5 a continuation of this one, and I will also tell you what I would have done differently. So other than that, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna support the channel, the fastest way that you can do it, and it's free for you, you subscribe, turn the notification bell on, give me comments down below, what would you do for stage two, or would you have done anything different on stage two? Or what steps would you take to actually uh, modernize a mountain bike? Other than that, if you want to support the channel in different ways, check the affiliate links in the description below. And that's going to be it for this stage. Stay tuned. I will come back with stage 2.5. That's it for this one. See you in the next one. Goodbye.